again, we say happy Father's Day to all the fathers here in the house. May God bless you on this day as we worship God. Today we pray that God will bless your hearts as we look to God today for strength as we look to him, for comfort as we look to him for everything we need, not only on this day, but in days to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have our announcements by Sister Connie David. Good morning, church. The announcements are as follows. Please join Pastor Rainsbury on the Monday morning prayer line at 6.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday evening, join us for prayer meeting and meditation at 6.30 p.m. and Bible study at 7. And please note that the Providence Baptist Church will be worshiping with us on July 14th through 17th, and all members are invited to those services. On behalf of the Christian Education Ministry, um, Deacon Stanzel is, I want us to know that we will recognize all our students in preschool, elementary, middle, and high school, and college who were promoted or received <clears throat> rewards and graduated this school year. Please give your child's name, grade promoted to, awards received, and college graduated from. Please give the names of these students to Deegan Dorothy Stansel or Sister Pat Kirk by July 3rd. The Student Recognition Day will be on the second Sunday in July, which is July 10th, 2022. And this will be done during the 1030 morning worship service. If you have any other information, please see uh, Deegan Stanzel or Sister Pat Kirk. Thank you. Amen. To all of you who are joining us by way of Facebook Live and by way of our live stream on our website, we say good morning to you. We thank you for joining us on this day. We hope and pray that God is blessing you even right now and that your lives will be blessed uh, by worshiping with us today as we come to give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. Uh, for those of you who are worshiping with us by way of our conference call, we say um, good morning to you as well. We thank God for your presence with us this morning, and we pray that this service will be a blessing uh, to your life. And to all of you who are here this morning, we say good morning, West Highestville. Good morning, good morning West Highestville. Amen. We're so glad to be here this morning for this time of worship and praise, and we pray again that this service will be a blessing to your life. I want to express uh, my thanks and appreciation to all the men uh, who came out yesterday uh, to help with the parking lot. We painted the parking lot yesterday. We hope you saw the line. Yeah. Amen. We can't. Beautiful day yesterday. Beautiful day. But we came yesterday and we painted uh, the lines in the, in the parking lot. And we want to thank uh, Brother Charles Bryce, uh, Brother Stephen Johnson, Brother Herman Bethea, uh, Brother George Dix, um, Brother Clarence Kondekai. Also want to thank, of course, our own Deacon Eric Byram and Deacon Reginald Brown. And we all came together and we did this on yesterday. Thank you, brothers, for a job well done. Thank you so much and special thanks to uh, the Deacon Byron who uh, played a pivotal role in making this a possibility by pursuing the materials and pursuing everything that needed to be done, contacting all of us to make sure that we were here to get the job done. And so I want to say thank you to him and again to all of us uh, brothers for a job well done. May God continue to bless us. When we come together as a church, there's, there's nothing we can do. We, if we put our minds and our hearts together, when we join our hands together, my brothers and sisters, there are many things we can do, not only here at this church, but also uh, throughout the world. And so we want to continue uh, to work together for the advancement of God's kingdom. Uh, by way of <clears throat> uh, additional announcements, uh, the homegoing celebration for uh, Mother Ethel War will be on July the 1st. It'll be on Friday, July uh, the first uh, viewing will be at 10 a.m. and the funeral will be at 11. So on July uh, the first, 
we will meet here to celebrate the life and the legacy of Mother Ethel War. Please continue to pray for the family. We want to continue to pray for Sister Sandy Richardson and her family as they make preparations for uh, their celebration. So again, please put that on your calendar. Uh, all of us uh, will be in our respective places to serve, choir, ushers, media ministry, deacons, all of us will be in our respective positions to serve at this funeral. So please make plans to be here on uh, July the 1st. Uh, on this past week, we did receive the sad news of the departure of the, the death of our dear sister, Deborah Blandon. Um, we had hope and prayed that uh, Deborah would do better uh, at one time, it seemed as though uh, she was doing a little better, but I got the call from uh, Deacon Blandon and she informed me that she passed away. So at this time, arrangements are incomplete. Uh, we will be listening to what uh, Deacon Blandon and the family has to say uh, to us. Deacon Blandon does ask at this time that uh, you will please uh, limit uh, your phone calls. Uh, please limit your phone calls, and if possible, she will not be receiving any visitors at this time. Uh, we love Deacon Blandon. Uh, we, we, we cherish her, her family. We cherish Deborah. We love all of them, and they love us. But my brothers and sisters, I, as you know, uh, people deal with grief differently. Okay, so please, as she is going through these moments, of bereavement, please let us keep that in mind. Pray for her. That we can do. Amen. We can pray. Amen. Amen. We can pray for Dick and Blandon and the family. We can pray that God will be with them and give them comfort. But at this time, uh, please, if possible, limit your, your phone calls. And also, she wants me to let you know uh, that she will not be receiving any visitors um, at uh, this time when she is ready to uh, to do that, to move beyond that point, she will let us know. But let us show her some love. Let us show her some mercy and some grace uh, by giving her the room uh, to deal with the passing of our dear sister, Deborah uh, Blanding. Uh, as far as, again, arrangements are concerned, once that time comes, uh, all of us, again, please be prepared to serve in your respective uh, areas. And um, as, as the information becomes available, we will share that uh, with you. This has been a rough week. This has been a rough, rough week. Um, we have lost this week two precious jewels uh, from within our family. And, and so let us continue to pray for one another. Let us hold up one another as we walk through these coming days of bereavement. It is no secret what God can do. Uh, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. So just know that God knows how we feel. He knows how we feel, okay? Because, again, he made us, okay? He made us. He knows how we feel. And he has promised that he would give us the strength to deal with the challenges that come our way. And so let us be prayerful, uh, let us be hopeful, and let us support one another as we deal with uh, the coming celebrations of life for two of our precious members. Again, this is Father's Day. We praise God for all the fathers who are here. May God continue to bless you and keep you as you go through this day. I know many of us are looking forward to uh, dinners, and, and we're going to be treated very well today. Amen, brothers? Amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I, I shared with the brothers yesterday that I saw this picture on Facebook. On one side, they had Mother's Day with uh, Olive Garden. On the other side, they had Father's Day with Popeyes. <laughs> now, y'all, come on now. Okay. I, now, I love me some Popeyes. Don't get me wrong. I do. Amen. But my wife and my daughter are here today, and they will testify. I've already put my order in. <laughs> now for Popeyes. 
Amen. Reservations have been made. Somebody better say amen. 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 So, so let's treat these brothers, these great brothers, uh, Christian fathers, treat them well today. Amen. We're so blessed this morning because one of our new members, one of our new members who joined this year, will come and give us a presentation as we celebrate our fathers. Let us welcome Sister Stacy Bethea as she comes. Good morning, church. Good morning. Today I'll be reading a poem by Epiphany with a few headings. It's called Father. He is the shine in a little girl's eyes, the icon of a son in the mirror, a husband to his wife, a provider and a leader, the endearing traits of a real man personified in how he lives. He is the strength of the family unit, the shelter in a raging storm, a patriarch to the ancestral tree, his seed produces legacy to carry on his destiny. He is stability in the midst of adversity. He rules with a gentle hand, teaches his daughter how to be loved, to accept nothing less than a true God-fearing man. He instills pride in his son to be the best man that he can be. Once a year is not enough to give credit where it's due. He is a momental influence to the innocence of youth, a consonant pillar of masculinity without a heavy hand of proof. If you had to measure a man in all he say or do, it is the path he chooses to follow. It is the fruit of his Christ-like spirit that makes him so unique. Amen. He is a father, the qualities of a hero unsung. 365 days of the year, on this special day, I salute fathers. Happy Father's Day, and may God bless you all. Amen. 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 Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, that was, that was beautiful. Get, get ready. More coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Brother Herman was here on yesterday uh, helping us uh, to paint. So thank you also to him and to the, the Bethea family who have come in as members and gone to work. Yeah. I mean, they have gone straight to work. And for that, we are so grateful. Just like we did on Mother's Day, there may be some of you here today whose fathers have passed away. My father passed away in uh, 1999. There may be others of you who have also suffered or experienced the loss of a father. I want us today to uh, show respect, give homage, remember our fathers who are no longer here among us. And so if your father has passed away, I'm going to ask you to stand to represent him, and we will all observe a moment of silence. If you have a father who has died, uh, stand, and we will observe a moment of silence to remember their time here on God's green earth. Let us bow. Merciful and gracious God, we thank you for the man we called Father, Dad, Daddy, Pop. Whichever word we choose, we thank you for that man who 
guided us and taught us to be who we are today. We ask now that we will continue to celebrate their life and legacy as we continue to remember them each day, not only on Father's Day, but each day of our lives, and then give you the glory for sending them our way. Thank you, God. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we come now to this moment of congregational prayer, again, we want to remember the uh, the Blandon and uh, the War family uh, in the time of bereavement and pray that God will be with them and guide them and lead them through these difficult days. We want to pray for us here at the West Hyattsville uh, Baptist Church because, again, these are two wonderful members who have left us and gone on to be with God. But God has taught us each time Whenever we lose, or whenever a member passes away, or a brother or sister passes away, that he is the God of all comfort, and that he will give us what we need to make it through the coming days. I pray uh, that God will bless each of you today. Continue to pray for those who are on our sick and sudden list. So good to see here Brother Robert Joseph. Where is he? Come on, Brother. Yeah, he is, Brother Robert Joseph. So glad to see you here on today, a faithful member of our church. May God continue to bless you as you continue to serve him each day of your life. There may be others here today who have prayer requests. Lift them up to God right now. Give them to Jesus right now. He can hear you. He will answer you right on time. The Reverend Fray Bostic will come now and lead us to the throne of grace. Father, mm -hmm. most gracious and loving God, oh, yes. we come to you at this hour, Father God, to lift up your holy name and to give you thanks, Father. Thanking you for another beautiful day, Lord God, this day that has been set aside especially for our fathers, mm -hmm. Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for just blessing those here, Lord God, that our fathers, dear Heavenly Father. Lord God, we thank you for this time that you have afforded us, Lord God, to be able to walk through those doors, dear Lord God. Father God, we thank you for this worship service, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear Lord God, for being God of love, God of mercy, and God of grace. We thank you this morning, Lord God, that you blessed us, Lord God, to be a part of this day. And so, Lord, we come to you at this hour, Lord God, interceding on behalf of so many and so other situations that are going on over this world, Lord God. Father God, but first of all, we want to say we thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died for our sins that we might have a right to eternal life. Thank you for your word and thank you for your Holy Spirit that we are studying in our Sunday school this morning, Lord God. How you gave us your spirit to dwell within us, dear Lord God that we might be the men, women, and boys and girls that you can use in a mighty way. Father God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, known and unknown. If we've done anything to offend anyone in any kind of way, oh Lord God, we ask you to forgive us right now and place it on their hearts, Lord God, that 
whom we have offended to be able to forgive us, dear Lord God. And so we thank you, Lord, because in your word you said we confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us yes. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we thank you right now, even before we come to you, Lord God, interceding on behalf of others. Lord God, hear our prayer, Lord. Hear our prayer, Lord God, and just move in your own special way. Not our will be done, but your will be done, dear Lord God. Father God, we lift up those who experience in death in their families, Lord God. Father God, two of our own, Lord God, the Blandins and the Wards, dear Lord God, who have lost loved ones. So we ask your peace will go with them, Lord God, and give them that peace that passes all understanding as they go through this process in their lives, Lord God. Father God, it's a sad time for us, but we know it's a glorious time, Lord God, right now in heaven where they are, Lord God, with you. And so, Lord God, we know that we all, Lord God, have to, uh, we all have to go through this, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're all gonna uh, face death, Lord God, and leave this earth, dear Lord God. But thanks be to God, we know that we have a place with you, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, where we can stand around the throne, dear Lord God, rejoicing, Lord God, and singing hallelujah, hallelujah, God Almighty. So, Father God, we thank you right now. Oh, Lord God, just continue to lead us and guide us, Lord God, in the way that you would have us to go, dear Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, let us know it's not about us, but it's all about our brothers and sisters out there that you have called us to minister to, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We lift up, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, those that are going through right now in our, in our sanctuary, dear Lord God. We ask your blessings upon each and every one of them, whether it be sickness, Lord God, situation they are place, that they are facing in their homes, situations whether they're whatever they are facing on their jobs or friendships or whatever, Lord God. We just ask you to move and let them know that they can call on you, dear Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, just bless them, Father God. Give them the faith that they know that with you all things are possible, dear Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, though, for those that have reached milestones, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we ask you to bless Sister Patsy, Lord God, as, as David has. She has uh, reached a milestone in 100 years, Lord God. And so we thank you for that, Lord God. What a blessing, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we ask you to bless all of those, dear Lord God, that are reaching milestones this year, whether it's a wedding anniversary, birthdays, or whatever, dear Lord God. Just bless them, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray. Lord God, we lift up our fathers today, Lord God, those that are here, those that are listening in, or those that are uh, uh, looking in, Lord God. We ask you to move in their lives and let them know, Lord God, that you love them, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, that you have placed them, Lord Lord God and families, Lord God, to be the to be their keep to be the family a provider, dear Lord God, to love the wives, to love their children, dear Lord God, and to treat them as you would have them to, dear Heavenly Father. Bless our fathers in a special way. Oh Lord God, be with them, Lord God, as they go out, Lord God, from day to day, Lord God. Oh Lord, let them be the fathers, Lord God, that Know the word, Lord God, oh, Heavenly Father, that can teach them, teach their household, Lord God, how to live in the word, dear Lord God. Have mercy upon them, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord God. Even those fathers, that are men that don't have children and serve as a father uh, figure, Lord God, Bless them, dear Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We know you have a special calling on their lives also, so we ask you to move, Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Lord God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for being God Almighty, who can do all things, knowing that there is nothing too hard for you, Lord God. Oh, Father God, just bless and lead us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Bless the rest of this worship service. Bless Pastor 
Pastor Rainsbury, as he prepared to come before us, Lord God. Let him deliver the word as you would have him to, Lord God. Oh, Father, take flesh out of the way and let the spirit rule in his life, Lord God, as he gets up this morning, Lord God, to deliver to us what you have put in his heart to deliver, dear Lord God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for his family, Lord God, for his wife, Janice, and daughter, Yingma, Lord God. Bless them, dear Lord God, in Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Father God, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord God, right now in Jesus' name. Let us know that you're God Almighty who can do all things. You provide, Lord God. You give peace, dear Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are there for us, Lord God, in the time of need, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord God, have mercy on us, my Lord and my God, my strength and my redeemer. Bless all the ministries here, Lord God, our ministers, Reverend Wright and uh, Reverend Wright, Lord God, our deacons, Lord God, our leaders here, Lord God, our trustees, the Heavenly Father, all of those that are serving in your congregation, be with us, Lord God, and keep us in your care. Oh, Lord, my God, my strength and my redeemer, you're worthy, Lord God, you are worthy, and let us not forget, Lord God, that you are God, our creator, who made the heavens and the earth and all that is therein, Lord God. Oh, Heavenly Father, let us not forget that you are God Almighty, who can do all things, Lord God, who is in control of all things, Lord God. Oh, Father, let us know that we be made do for a night, but joy is certainly coming in the morning when we put all our faith and trust in you and just wait on you and be patient, Lord God, waiting for you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise God. Sister Patsy Davis. And West Hyattsville Baptist Church, I want you to know you were represented at that occasion, and uh, Mother Davis sends her thanks and appreciation to all of us uh, for the arrangement that we sent uh, to her. Uh, must have been, in fact, I think Connie told me it was a wonderful, beautiful celebration. And we thank God for 100 years of life upon this. Uh, be thankful for every day. Uh, each day that God gives you, that you're able to rise out of your bed and put your feet on the ground. Give God the praise for each day because God is so good uh, to all of us. I'm going to ask the choir to come and give us a selection, and then this selection will be followed by a child dedication here this morning at our church. And uh, choir, as you prepare to come, uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here this morning. Uh, I know this is not an easy task in light of what happened this past week. Yeah. But I want to express my thanks to all of you yeah, who were here this morning for your commitment yeah. and your dedication to doing the ministry of Christ. May God strengthen you yeah. and may God keep you as you continue to serve. And the choir will come with one selection and then this will be followed by the dedication 
of our child's life. made we will rejoice and be glad in it amen? amen amen this morning we have come to dedicate a child to, to the Lord amen. Demetrius Antonio Ganey Jr. Amen. Junior <laughs> amen family parents friends please come forward at this time 
and bring uh, Antonio with you, please. God, parents, friends, family, all of you, come on down. Is that Junior right there? Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. There you go. Come stand by me. Come right here, son. Amen. No, y'all stand up. Come on. <laughs> oh, you just stand right here. And uh, leave an opening right here. <laughs> That's the man right there. Amen. We, we got some sprays over here. Yeah, I'm going to spray down this way, too. Amen. Yeah, he got that cane. There you go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, again, we have come to dedicate this child back to the Lord. The parents are Father Demetrius Antonio Gany Sr. And Monique. All right, Monique, Green Day, Hargard, amen. We want to welcome the family and friends who have come this day to participate in this ceremony. We want to also uh, thank all those who may be joining us by way of Facebook or other communication devices on our website who are watching uh, to join in this time. We give God the praise for this moment. We are dedicating this child to the Lord and praying that he will come to know and serve Jesus. We are dedicating these parents to the Lord and praying that they will be given wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and the ability to raise his child in the way of the Lord. We are dedicating ourselves as a church family to be the village that helps to raise this child by supporting his parents and providing opportunities for Christian training here at our church. Let us pray. God, our Father, we come now to say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for the gift of this child. We thank you, O oh God, because we know his presence here among us is no accident, but he is here by your providence. And so we pray now, God, that you will bless this child. Only you know what you have in his future. You have made his life, O oh God, from beginning to end. And so now, as you have given him to his parents, they now give him back to you. To be used, O oh God, to be blessed, to be one who will walk upon this earth and make a difference in your name. Because God, he is a gift from you. Bless this mother, bless this father, bless this family as they put their arms around each other and as they do their very best to make sure that Demetrius grows up in a way that pleases you, that he will follow you all the days of his life. We say thank you, we say thank you, we say thank you, and we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. A passage of scripture found in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hand upon them. But his disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. 
Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and placed his hands upon them and blessed them. Parents, I'm going to ask you one question and you will respond with the answer, we will. Parents, do you pledge as parents that with God's help, you will bring up this child in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, making every effort with patience and love to build the word of God in him, in his character, and in the joy of the Lord for all his life. If you would do so, please say we will. Yeah. Family, including Godparents. Do you on this day pledge to support Demetrius and Monique in helping them provide wisdom, guidance, and necessary resources to ensure that this child is nurtured in a loving home and community family, if you will say, I will. Amen. Congregation, will you, members of the West Hyattsville Baptist Church, be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ so that this child will grow up in knowledge and love of Jesus Christ, if you will say, we will. We will. Amen. Hey, man, you trust me? You trust me? Come here. All right. <laughs> I guess he trusts me. <laughs> Let us pray. God, this is your child. You made him and you gave him. And so now, God, in the name of Jesus, we give him back to you. Bless him, O oh God. With all that's happening in our world with children today, O oh God, make this child a good child. Let him be obedient to his parents. Let him listen to wisdom and to knowledge. Let him, O oh God, follow in the path of righteousness. For your name's sake. Bless him now. Not just today. But forevermore. Bless his parents. Give them all they'll need to rear him. Oh God to raise him. And to lead him and guide him. And we pray God that each day. That he will make them. Proud parents. Thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you oh God. For the answers you're going to give. We now dedicate. Demetrius Antonio Ganey Jr. Back to you. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God some praise. You all right, man? You see, you see what he got on his shirt, right? Boss. So he's the boss. Parents, understand that we're here for you. We can help you. Like we said, we are all in the village. You've heard before. It takes a village to raise a child. All of us are in the village. You are not by yourself. So let us know if there's anything we can do to help you with this great young man. Grandmama, we know, we know what happens to grandmamas. <laughs> this, is, this is Rhoda's uh, grandson. So we pray God's blessings upon you, God, parents and family, all of you. Please know that we are here at West Hyersville to help you. Come out. That's Godmother and that's Grandfather. Godfather, we thank you for coming. And again, this is a gift that God has given to you. Great grandmother. Auntie. Oh, let, let me hear all of it. Come on. Grandma, who else? Sister. 
you're in trouble, son. <laughs> Let's give God some praise. God bless you. Okay, you can go to your seat now. God bless all of you. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Look, you want to sit up here with me? I think, family, you have, you have started out right Amen. by giving this child back to God. You have done the right thing. And now let all of us do our part to make sure that not only him but children everywhere follow in the right path. We're living in dangerous days. But when we pray and cover them with prayer, we know that God will take care of our children. Amen? Amen. 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 Reverend James Wright is going to come and read our scripture, and then this will be followed by another selection by the choir, and then I will return with the sermon. Our scripture this morning will be coming from St. Matthew's, the sixth chapter, and I'm reading from the King James Version, and this is Jesus speaking. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou dost arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray you, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The word of God for God's people. When I 
take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great the Thank God that we serve a great God and we can truly testify of how great uh, he is. Thank you so much for blessing us uh, on uh, this day. Um, let me announce uh, very quickly, I forgot to mention that following this morning's uh, service, uh, a meal has been prepared by the family of Demetrius. Thank you to our own, uh, uh, our own sister um, Rhoda Smith who has provided, and family, uh, a light refreshment. So following the service, please, please go upstairs, get you a box. You don't have to stay and eat. Just get you a box as you're leaving because they have put in a lot of effort uh, to make uh, this for us. So please, ma'am, please, sir, following this morning service, uh, just make your way to the fellowship hall and get you a, a box with some food in it. And uh, if you're like me, you might eat it before you get home. <laughs> you never know. You may have a long way to drive <laughs> before you get to that restaurant for that Father's Day dinner. I'm trying to help your fathers. I'm trying, man. I, I am trying to help y'all today. Uh, help us, I should say. So, but following this service, please make your way upstairs and, and get you um, a meal. And uh, that we all be blessed on this day. Thank you so much, Rhoda, for doing that uh, for us and um, as we celebrate together. Reverend Wright uh, read in our passage for today, uh, Matthew 6, 1 to 13. Um, I want to just read briefly. Uh, verses uh, 9 to 11, and then we'll walk through the rest of the chapter. N Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 9 uh, to 11. And, and, and there we will find uh, these words. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. I want to preach about God, our Father. God, our Father. Let me begin this sermon today by declaring that the greatest blessing anyone can experience in this life is the blessing of having a relationship with God. This relationship, which is made possible by receiving God's Son, Jesus Christ, as Savior and Lord, this, this relationship offers people the privilege and pleasure of experiencing God in a personal relationship. When we have a personal relationship with God, we get to know him as more than the creator and sustainer of life, but we get to know him in a manner that expresses our connection with him, especially as it relates to his work in our lives. Over the years, our fathers and mothers, our grandfathers and grandmothers, our elders have taught us that as we walk with God, as he leads us from day to day, we will experience his power and purpose in our lives. Amen. Now, as they walked with God, our elders created their own adjectives to best describe what God meant to them. Uh, they called him way maker because someone said God can make a way out of no way. They, they called him mind regulator uh, because someone said that God can bring peace to a troubled mind. Uh, they called him heart fixer uh, because God can heal a broken heart. They called him a battle axe because someone said God will fight for you in the time of your battle. Amen. But there is another word that our elders use to describe that relationship with God. And that word uh, is what we celebrate today. Uh, our elders called God Father. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we ought to be glad today. That on this Father's Day, we can call God our Father. Amen. Your earthly father may be absent from your life. Your earthly father may have passed away and he's gone to be with the Lord. But that's all right. You still have a father who is in heaven. Somebody ought to be glad today, my brothers and sisters, because the God of the universe, the God who created this world, the God who makes the sun to rise in the east and set in the west, the God who makes the moon to shine at night, the God who allows those glittering chandeliers called stars to go in the dark sky, that God is our Father. In the text before us this morning, we find Jesus engaged in one of, his, one of his regular ministry activities. We find him teaching his disciples. In this particular teaching session, we find Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. In this lesson from Jesus on prayer, it was necessary because the religious community of that day was taught a model or an example of prayer that was used by religious leaders of that day. When you look at Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 and 8, you, you will see that Jesus admonished his disciples to avoid using that prayer model because it was based on wrong motives. Amen. He therefore gave them a new model for prayer, and that is what we call the Lord's Prayer. Amen. In the Lord's Prayer, or in the model prayer, Jesus teaches his disciples to pray to God. This is why he opens the, the prayer with the words, Our Father, which art in heaven. Uh -huh. In this prayer, my brothers and sisters, let us make a few 
observations about what Jesus teaches us about our Father who is in heaven. And the first observation we'll have to make as we look at this is the praise of God the Father. The praise of God the Father. Jesus opens the mouth of prayer in Matthew 6 verse 9 with our Father which art in heaven, hallowed or hallowed be thy name. The word hallow or hallowed in the English translation of the Bible means to be holy. It is a word that ascribes glory and honor to a person who is worthy of such a distinction. When we pray, hallowed be thy name to God, our Father, in essence, we are saying, Father, let your name be glorified. Father, we recognize and we declare your holiness, your majesty, and your greatness. God himself said in Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. My brothers and sisters, even in these difficult days, God our Father deserves to be praised. Not only because of what he has done for us, but also because of who he is to us. Jesus said, hallowed be thy name, which leads us to glorify and magnify God's name. Well, what is it about God's name that deserves the praise? To answer this question, we must understand that biblical names did more than just identify a person. Biblical names was also a description of that person's character. So when we praise God our Father, when we praise his name, we highlight aspects of his character. Well, what do we know about God's character? Well, when you read God's word, when you walk with God daily, you will discover a few things about God's character. God is holy. God is righteous. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is loving. God is kind. God is faithful. That is uh, his character that everybody ought to know something about in the Old Testament days, the Hebrews had different names for God. In, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14, they called him Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, they called him Jehovah Rapha, which means the Lord will heal. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 15, they called him Jehovah Nissi, which means God is my banner. In Judges chapter 24, they called him Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. In Psalm 23 verse 1, they call him Jehovah Ra, which means the Lord is my shepherd. In Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 35, they call him Jehovah Shema, which means the Lord is there. In Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6, they call him Jehovah Sekunu, which means the Lord is our righteous. My brothers and sisters, we ought to be glad today that our heavenly father deserves all the praise. The God of our fathers, the God of our mothers, deserves all the praise. The God of Ethel War deserves the praise. The God of Deborah Blandon deserves the praise. The God who made it possible for slaves to hear on Juneteenth that they were free. That God deserved the praise. Somebody give God the praise today. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. Praise you, O oh God, for your name. We worship your name. We magnify yeah, anybody here know anything about the name God? I'm telling you, when you call his name, he knows how to put things back together. Jesus taught his disciples, when you're praying, open up your prayer by giving God the praise. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But not only do we see the praise 
of God our Father, we also see the presence of God our Father. In verse 10, Jesus said, that kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There are two words used in this verse that represents God's presence among us. They are the words kingdom and the word will. The word kingdom in the verse refers to power, authority, and dominion. The word will in the verse makes reference to a person's desire to do what is pleasing to that person. My brothers and sisters, it should be our conviction that when we allow God's power, God's authority, and God's dominion to take charge of our lives, when we begin to do that which pleases God in earth as it does in heaven, then our communities and our institutions will begin to experience the presence of God. We will begin to see positive changes that impact our lives. God's kingdom is not a political kingdom. God's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, which is manifested through the preaching, the teaching, and the practice of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When the gospel is presented, accepted, and practiced, then people are given the opportunity to live in a manner that reflects God's kingdom and God's will. The absence of God's kingdom and the lack of obedience to God's will will only lead to chaos and crisis that would destroy lives in our communities. Look at what's happening around us today. Look what's happening around us. Violent crimes in the streets. Shootings and killings in our schools. Dismantling of the family as God has intended it to be. Erasing of values and virtues that brought stability and integrity to our beloved institution. When God's kingdom and will are not obeyed, when God's presence is not recognized and appreciated, then we are headed for disaster and destruction. Let us therefore continue to pray for the presence of God the Father. Let us submit to his agenda as outlined in his word so that we may be beneficiaries of the blessings that he has for us. My brothers and sisters, without God, we can do nothing. Without God, we would fail. Without God, our lives would be rugged like a ship without a sail. The one who taught us to submit to God's will and kingdom is himself the best example of these divine virtues. You remember in the garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying, he was aware of his impending betrayal. He knew he was about to be arrested. He knew he was about to be tried. He knew he was going to be convicted and he was going to be crucified. In his prayer, however, Jesus prayed, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. By praying this prayer, Jesus submitted to the will of God his Father and to the purposes of God's kingdom. And as Christians... We should have the same desire. God, our Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Each day of our lives, let us pursue the presence of God. Not, in the, not only in our lives, but in our homes, in everywhere we are. May God's presence be recognized and appreciated. The praise 
of God the Father, the presence of God the Father. But the third thing we see in this prayer, and that is the provisions of God our Father. My brothers and sisters, without a doubt, we serve a God who provides all our needs. All our needs. Look back over your life, and you will have to say that all you have need, all you have needed, the Lord has provided. A hymn writer by the name of Hattie Buell wrote a hymn called The Child of the King. And in the first verse of that hymn, she wrote these words. My father is rich in houses and lands. He holdeth the wealth of the world in his hand. Of rubies and diamonds, of silver and gold, his coffers are full with riches unto. I am a child of the king. A child of the king with Jesus as my savior. I am a child of the king. Amen. In the text from verses 11 to 13, Jesus includes in this model prayer several provisions. First, he says, give us this day our daily bread. The reference to bread in the text it's not only bread as we know it, because indeed it was the staple diet of that day. Amen. People eat, eat bread that day like some of us eat rice every day. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah, they ate bread all the time, just like some of us eat rice all the time. But it did not only have reference to the daily bread. Uh -huh. But it also had reference to our daily needs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever it is we need, Jesus said to his disciples, pray and ask God to supply your daily need. And when he said daily bread, he was encompassing all of that. Amen. Amen. The, late, uh, the late Adrian Rogers, great preacher, used to pastor the uh, Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I was listening one day to Adrian Rogers preach, and he said something that I'll never forget. Amen. Adrian Rogers said, why should I worry about my daily bread yeah. when my father's own the bakery? Why should I worry Amen. about my daily bread yeah. Yeah. when my father owns the bakery? Amen. When we were children, my mother had a shop when we were growing up, my sister and I in, in Liberia, and very successful business she had. People would come and buy things all the time. But when they would come, they would come to the counter of the shop to purchase the items. But when Tyra, my sister, and I wanted something from the shop, we didn't have to go to the counter. What we would do is go to the side door and get in and take whatever we wanted. Why is that? Because mama owned the shop. And if my mama or my daddy owns the shop, well, shucks, I could get in there whatever I want. And anything I needed or wanted, I just went in there and got it. My brothers and sisters, if we have a God who owns all there is in the world, we don't have to worry about our daily needs. He will supply. He will. So I'm not going to worry. Reverend Wright, I'm not going to worry about my daily bread. Because my daddy, he owns the bakery. And if he owns the bakery, why do I need to worry? All I got to do is say, Daddy, I'm in need of this and the other. Give us this day our daily bread. 
But there's something else in, in line with those provisions that God says we can ask for. Look at verse 12. And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Forgiveness from God our Father is needed each day we walk upon this earth. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in some cases, we fall short every day, every hour, every minute, every second. We do something that displeases God. But I'm glad that we serve a God who is a forgiving God, that when we sin, we can ask him, God, please forgive us for the wrong we have done. And God, who is rich in mercy, God, who is a righteous God, it is he who will forgive us. Now, if God is willing to forgive us, then my brothers and sisters, we got to forgive each other. We got to forgive each other. You know, we live in a very judgmental world. People are so quick to point out other people's sins. So quick to tell others what they've done wrong. And don't even take the time to look at themselves and see what they've done wrong all right. Be careful. My brothers and sisters, because all of us are in the same boat. We're living in this thing called human body. All of us fall short of God's glory. And so we must not be just mental, but we must be prayerful. That if you see someone doing wrong, pray for that person. Today is them. Tomorrow it could be you. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. The, the phrase as we forgive our debtors assumes that as God forgives me, I'm going to forgive you. If God forgives me, I can't walk around saying, I, I'm sorry, preacher, I can't let this one go. No, 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 bro, pastor, I, I hear. I hear what you say, brother pastor, but this, this one here, uh, yeah, I'm going to hang on to this one. Well, how do you expect God to forgive you if you keep holding on to something that happened 25 years ago? How do you expect God to forgive you when you keep holding on to something that happened last night? See, I'm stepping on somebody's toes. If I am, just say, ouch, and keep moving, baby. Just How is God supposed to forgive you if I'm constantly holding on to stuff that you did to me that hurt my feelings, and I'm determining my mind I won't forgive you, and you still expect God. So Jesus says in this prayer, Forgive us our debt. That means forgive my trespasses as I forgive others who, have in, who are indebted to me or who have trespassed against me. And if you do so, I do believe God will help us. And then he closes verse 13 by saying this last petition. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. My brothers and sisters, all of us right now are living in the presence of evil. We are living in the presence of sin. But there's a God who knows every trick of the devil. There's a God who sees the potholes and the ditches and the gutters and the traps that the devil have laid for us. So if we pray to him, God, 
Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. That suggests that God will provide his divine guidance to take us in the path of righteousness. Because again, God knows what the devil is going to do even before he does it. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we ought to be glad today that we have God as our father. When we are in trouble, he will deliver us. When we are sick, he will heal us. When we are weak, he will make us strong. When we are in despair, he will give us hope. When we are burdened with grief and sorrow, he will walk beside us and help us carry our load along the way. In 1941, a gospel singer named Roberta Martin composed a song that's in our hymn that goes something like this. We are our heavenly father's children. And we all know that he loves us one and all. Yet there are times when we find we answer another's voice and call. If we are willing, he will teach us his voice only to obey no matter where. For he knows. Oh, yes, he knows. I said he knows. Oh, yes, he knows. What does he know, brother preacher? He knows just how much we can bear. West Highsville Baptist Church, I know right now our hearts are heavy. I know right now that we are shedding tears. Some may even be asking the question why. But I need you to tell, I need to tell you, my brothers and sisters, God knows exactly where we are. And the God who knows is the God who will come and take care of us. Be glad today that we have a heavenly father who loves us true and true. And all we need to do is trust him and watch what he'll do for you. Why don't you give God the praise today? He is our heavenly father a father whom we can praise a father whose presence we desire and a father who makes provisions no matter where we are or where we go thank God for our heavenly father on this father's day he is the best father that anyone could ever have. But if you're here today and you don't have this father, I'm here to tell you that this father loves you and he wants you to be his child. Why don't you accept him today? Come to him Today and let him be the ruler of your life. And if he is your father, my brothers and sisters, that means you have joy, you have hope, you have a bright future in God. Not because of us, but because of who he is. He is a loving, gracious, kind father. If you're here today without knowledge of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is the son that this father sent. If you do not have him in your life today, oh, what a day to make God your father. On this Father's Day, why don't you come and make God your father? And if you're here, we will introduce you to this man named Jesus. Jesus. And you will be saved. So if you have not accepted Jesus. As your Lord and Savior. If God is not the father of your life. The ruler of your life. This is the, come, the time to come. And give your life to God. If you're here this morning. You are a Christian. But you do not have a church home. You're here this morning. And you, 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 you don't have a church family. You don't have a pastor. This is the time for you to come. Join us here 
at the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. Become a member of this fellowship. Let us grow in Christ together and see what God would do in your life. As we extend this invitation to discipleship, why don't you come now? Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come and be a member of this church. Is there another? I saw oh. all to thee, blessed Savior. I Is there another who will come today? I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. All to thee, my. Oh, we thank God today. We thank God today that even now as we hear from my clerk that the doors of the church are still open. You can come just the way you are. All to thee, my Pastor Rainsbury and church. This is Harrison Zuba. He is the son of oh, Lorraine Zuba. And Harrison wants to be baptized and become a member of West Hydesville Baptist Church. Amen. 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 I'm happy to say that Harrison and I have had a number of conversations <laughs> about this moment. And it is my conviction that God has his hand upon this young man. Amen. And that he wants to become a member of our church by way of baptism. Amen. I have already asked him if he believes in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He said yes. He believes in Christ. That is what is required for baptism in the name of Jesus. And so since he has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, we're going to enroll him in our new members class in our Christian Education Department. We'll take care of him and we'll work with uh, Lorraine and see how best we can give him the training that he needs. And at the end of that uh, training, that process, we will baptize Harrison Suba. Pray for him. Pray that God will be with him in his walk with the Lord. God is doing a mighty work in the lives of our young people. He is doing a great work in the life, in the life of the West Hyersville Baptist Church. Let's continue to pray as God adds to this church. For I do believe that in the life of West Hyersville, the best is yet to come. Amen. Harrison, we will baptize you when you're done with your class. Look forward to working with you in the kingdom of God, buddy. God bless you. God keep it as I pray. All right? Come on, let's give God some praise. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling that everything's gonna oh, be all right, be all right. 
Amen. Amen. Are there any, I know there are many first-time visitors here today, but I'm going to ask anyway. <laughs> All first-time visitors to the West Highestville Baptist Church, please stand. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming to give you uh, information. Please complete those forms and uh, leave those with us so we can stay in touch with you. Some of you may already have church homes, but just in case you don't, as I just told you, uh, our doors are wide open. You can come and be with us here, but we're so glad that you came to join us here today for this service. I know many of you came for the baby dedication, but we're still happy to have you here on today, okay? All right, so very quickly, starting on the front row, let's just get your name and where you're from. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. You want to make this number three? You, you can... <laughs> hey, <laughs> ain't no shame in my game, baby. <laughs> you got two. Throw one more in there. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Welcome to all, all, here you go. <laughs> Welcome to all of you who have come to be with us today. One more? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank all of you for coming today. We certainly hope and pray that this service was a blessing to your life. Please come back again. We have service every Sunday. Here at 1030, please come back again. We also have Bible study by way of uh, conference call. If you look on the back of your bulletin, you will see uh, the phone number for the conference call and the passcode. We have prayer service on Wednesday at 630 and then tomorrow morning on Monday morning at 630 a.m. We have also a prayer service and meditation. So please free, feel free to join us here again. If you cannot join us in person, of course, you can join us by way of Facebook or live stream on our website. Thank you so much for coming again. My brothers and sisters, let us now prepare to bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord. We thank God for giving us what we have, and we thank him for the many blessings he continues to bestow upon us. Father, we thank you now for this time of giving. We thank you for this time of stewardship. We ask now that you please bless the offering, the tithe that will be given today. Bless the giver, bless the gift, and may these gifts be used for kingdom building. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together. Amen. Ushers are coming.
Treat everybody well. I'm gonna treat everybody right. Oh, I'm gonna treat everybody right. Oh, until I die. Oh, I'm gonna treat everybody right. Oh, treat. to uh, give a special thanks and appreciation to uh, Sister uh, Safi Sise. Uh, you saw me sipping on something <laughs> up here. Well, a few days ago, uh, Safi gave me some, a, a gallon of ginger beer. And I learned a long time ago, I mean, back when I was a teenager, that ginger beer is good for the voice. Amen. And, and uh, Safi, I was able to get some clarity in my voice today. So, so church members, that's all that's in here. <laughs> because, <laughs> so, somebody's only going to hear the word beer. <laughs> It won't hear the word ginger. <laughs> it's ginger beer. Okay, it's something that we, we make uh, in, in Africa, in the Caribbean. Uh, good stuff. It's strong stuff. Uh, it has a lot of strength to it, but it's good for the voice. Thank you so much. I was able to make it through without losing my voice, as I so often do. My brothers and sisters, um, I, I'm glad that we were able to worship. Uh, together today, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to celebrate, uh, that we're able to laugh and have a good time today. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Uh, the coming days are going to be difficult, but trust in him. And remember the good times. Always remember the good times. And I do believe that God will take us through the coming weeks. God is able, amen. God is able, and he will do that for us. So let's um, be attentive to the announcements that will be given relative to the celebration of life for our dear sister Deborah. Uh, once we receive that information, uh, we'll give that to you as soon as possible. Sister War, Ethel Wars, again, her funeral will be on July the 1st. So let us make preparations for that. I hope to hear your voice in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, for our prayer and meditation as we come together as a church family. Again, the conference call number is on the back of the bulletin along with the passcode. If you cannot join us on tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., join us on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for our prayer, meditation, 
and Bible study. We are still in the book of Philippians. We'll be closing out uh, chapter 1 on this coming uh, Wednesday. Please join us as we come together to study God's word. Let us stand. Father, we thank you for your presence and your power here today. Thank you for what we have felt. We thank you, O oh God, for Demetrius, and pray, God, you will bless him. Bless his parents, his family, his godparents, all that are around this child. Bring them up. Bring him up, O oh God, that he will walk in your way. I pray for Harrison, O oh God, who, uh, a young man who has come and given his life, wants to join your church by way of baptism. I pray, God, you be with him, be with his family. These young men, O oh God, that are coming up, use them mightily in your word. Let these be men of stature, men of integrity, that as they grow up, they will know that we're serving a true and a living God. Again, we pray for our bereaved families. We pray for those who are sick. We ask God you continue to lead us and guide us as we go each day. If it is your will, bring us together again, O oh God, on next Sunday as we shall come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Until then, we pray, God, that you walk with us, talk with us, keep us in your care, that we'll serve you in a manner. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. That even when we don't have fathers around us, you are still there for us. We pray now that you will bless the food that we are about to receive as we go to the fellowship hall. And as we leave this building, we ask now for traveling mercies as we go and then again uh, to take us safer to our homes, but then again to bring us back at the appointed time. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest Rule and abide in our hearts now, henceforth, and forevermore. Everybody say, Have a good day, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Remember, go upstairs and get some food. Everybody sing it.